to the School of Mathematics uh, and Statistics and I'm going to take you through the information booklet for the subject Maths 1081 Discrete Mathematics. My name is Peter Brown, I'm the Director of First Year Mathematics in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. Maths 1081 is one of our most interesting courses. It's also quite a difficult course and I want to just take you through it carefully so we understand exactly what the administrative side of the course is about. So this is a six unit of credit course. Six unit of credit course. It's offered in both semesters. The assumed knowledge for the course is we assume you have the equivalent of a combined mark of about 100, at least 100, in HSC 2 unit mathematics and extension 1. Some of you may have done extension 1 and extension 2, but you need to have done at least extension 1 mathematics as an assumed knowledge for this course. This course um, requires a certain degree of mathematical maturity in order to be able to get through it and there is a formal pre or co-requisite of either maths 1131, 1141 or 1151. It's very different from high school mathematics in that the emphasis here is on reasoned argument and logic, uh, clarity of exposition rather than just calculational and algebraic skills. So you're going to get lots of questions of the type prove this result explain why this is true, um, occasionally discuss and so on, rather than just solve this equation or differentiate this function. So it, it will help you greatly in developing your problem solving skills and in thinking logically and in writing mathematics in a clear and concise way. And you'll find that very useful both for mathematics and for future courses in computing. The lecturer for the course is Dr. David Angel, and that's the details for his, that's his room number there. He'll give you uh, more information about his email address and um, availability and so on in the lectures. There are four hours a week of lectures for this course. Three of them are in Webster A, they're on Tuesday 1 to 2, Wednesday 3 to 4, Thursday 9 to 10, and one on Monday 12 to 1 in Webster B. Lecture attendance is really important. Some students, I think, very, very unwisely decide they can teach themselves the material. You pick up so much from attending lectures. Dr. Angel is an excellent lecturer. You can learn a huge amount of mathematics from him. You won't pick up anywhere near as much if you're just trying to read the mathematics out of a textbook. So I do encourage you to attend lectures and to engage in the lectures, be thinking, asking questions uh, and enjoying, hopefully, also the mathematics in the, the lectures there. The material is divided up into five sections and these are presented in either two or three week segments as listed here, so five different topics. Topic one is on uh, sets and uh, functions, abstract functions on sets. Chapter two does some number theory and some um, abstract relations. Chapter three, which is probably the hardest chapter, is a chapter on techniques of proof. And that's probably one of the highlights of the course. It's quite hard, but it's very important in how to set out mathematics very clearly. And different methods and approaches to doing mathematical proof. Chapter 4 is uh, a chapter on, I think, combinatorial mathematics, uh, counting, uh, and also recurrences. And chapter 5 is on graph theory, and that's one of the... Uh, more interesting and not quite so hard a parts of the course is chapter 5. So um, more information about that will be given as you're going through. There will be two tutorials per week and you must attend both of the tutorials, two tutorials per week. And they're in different groups. 
So for example, Group A, Monday 9 to 10, Friday 3 to 4, and so on. And you must attend each of the two tutorials in whatever group you're down for. You can't mix and match, you can't do one tutorial here and one tutorial there. You'll have the same tutor for each of the two, two tutorials. Tutorials will run from weeks 2 to 13. No tutorial in week 1. Uh, you must, must uh, organise, if you want to change your uh, tutorial, you must do this through Student Services Office on the third floor. You cannot do it, do it by simply turning up and uh, asking your tutor to put your name down. It must be done formally with Student Services. The attendance at tutorials, as I say, is compulsory. There will be a role taken for that. The teaching materials plus announcements plus all sorts of various things will be available on UNSW Moodle. Many of you will have used this before in earlier semesters. If this is your first semester here, then you can get into Moodle by using your UNSW login and you'll see a Moodle um, icon. You can click on that and get into Moodle. You'll get a list of your subjects. You then choose Math 1081 and you'll find the various bits of information there. You can also check your uh, marks there as the class tests get entered. You can check your marks have been entered correctly uh, in that. If you're having trouble with that, then you should contact the IT Service Centre. Now, the textbooks for the course um, are EP, Discrete Mathematics with Applications, and also the Franklin Endowed Introduction to Proofs in Mathematics. You should wait and see, perhaps, what the lecturer says in the first lecture about the use of these textbooks. You will find references, detailed references, to these in the beginning of this information booklet just before the tutorial exercises. And there are some other reference books there as well. So you might hang off getting these until you see what the lecturer says to you. Now the assessment um, consists of class tests which will count up to 20% and a final examination which is 80%. So you'll have four class tests in this course these will be done in tutorials with your tutor. Four class tests, they're just short 20 minute tests. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit longer, 25, perhaps 30 minutes at most. And these count, we take the best three of the four. So you do four tests, we count the best three of these. We work out a mark out of then 20% and the final examination counts 80%. The um, class tests, you will not be allowed to use a calculator in the class tests. You won't need one. We try to make sure we're in those topics which do have a little bit of arithmetic in them. We try and make the arithmetic fairly easy and straightforward, but we don't allow calculators in class tests. Please to check your marks, at least by the end of the semester, uh, you'll be able to check your marks on the Maths and Stats uh, link on your, the um, home page for Maths 1081 on Moodle. Very important you check that. Uh, if there are any discrepancies or any problems, then you must bring them either to your tutor or to me and get them sorted out before the end of week 13. So by very latest Friday week 13. It is unfortunate, it doesn't happen in this course very often, but it happens occasionally students get their final results, then go back and look and realise that one of their class tests wasn't entered properly, and then they come and complain after the results have already gone out, and it's too late then. You must check your marks early before the end of the semester, and we'll get those sorted out. The um, next thing I wanted to mention, I mentioned the class tests. Uh, they're on in weeks 4, 6, 9 and 12. And as I said, we will take the best three of the class tests. They'll be on in the first tutorial of the week. So as I said, you'll have two tutorials a week. Generally, these are held in the first tutorial of the week. So please note that. If you happen to miss a tutorial, which is not a test tutorial, 
well, that's just as it is. You don't need to bring medical certificates for missing tutorials. If you miss a class test, however, then you and you're ill and you're unable to attend due to illness, then you will bring a medical certificate to your tutor at the next available tutorial or fairly soon thereafter, and your tutor will record an M, which will give you an average across the other tests. So you don't need to apply, please do not apply for special consideration for class tests. The uh, system won't allow you in mathematics anyway to do that. But for class tests, you just need to bring a medical certificate to your tutor and they'll be able to sort it out for you. You must do the test in the tutorial in which you've been allocated. So please to make sure you know what tutorial class you're in and you turn up to that tutorial and you do your test there. Otherwise, the tutor cannot enter the mark. And so you'll, even if you manage to do the test in the wrong tutorial, it won't be entered into the system. So please to note that. You should bring your own paper and so on, perhaps a stapler, staple the papers together for each test. Now, you can get uh, a little bit of help outside the, um, of tutorials. As I say, you'll have a tutor who may have uh, certain office hours, you can go and see them. Uh, the Student Support Scheme generally does not cover discrete mathematics. And so the main place to get help with this outside of class time is to use our consultation roster, which will be available on the web page on the School of Mathematics and Statistics web page. It's got a nice consultation roster there, and there'll be a full-time member of staff available at quite a few hours during the week where you can get extra assistance if you need it for this subject. You should, um, I've mentioned to you what happens if you're ill. Please to remember also that at the end of semester, uh, if you are ill for the final exam, then you can apply for special consideration for the final exam. You should make sure, if you do do that, please make sure that you read this page in the course information booklet very carefully because it contains all the, all the various steps you need to go through to make sure uh, that you do all this properly. The, I have students again every semester who turn up after the results go out and suddenly remember that they weren't well during the exam and it's too late. You might, if, you're gonna, if you're ill at the exam, then you must follow the rules and regulations very carefully to get access to a deferred exam. And there are certain rules about whether you're going to be uh, allowed to take that or not. There is no computing component to the um, course, so you don't need to worry about computing components in discrete maths. We will put up a provisional list of results for all the mathematics courses, and we put this up fairly early. It's called a provisional list, but it almost is almost always is identical with the final marks. So again, students have said to me, oh, I saw the provisional list, but I didn't think it was the final mark. Well, it almost certainly will be, and we put this up fairly early, so please to note down the day of the results come out. You can check your provisional marks back on the 28th of November. We'll try and get that out sometime on that day. And because um, we can then let you know, or rather you can find out on the following Monday whether or not you've been granted a deferred exam in the event that you have applied for one. This will happen quite a, a few uh, a few weeks before the university puts out its final results because the deferred exams are often on fairly early, possibly even before the university has put out its final results. So please, if you're in this category where you have applied for special consideration, but please be aware of all the important dates here. All the information that I have given you here today is available in, from the information booklet 
in the course pack, which you can obtain from the co-op book, from the, the bookshop here at the university. So pleased to have a look at the course pack. The course pack will contain the information booklet, which also has all of the tutorial exercises in it. It will also contain a pack with all the, um, a whole range of past examination papers plus solutions, which you, to, at the end of the session, you'll find very, very useful to go back and have a look at past exams, and there are complete work solutions there. As well as that, we will also be putting up on Moodle a number of videos. Uh, this is just simply a sample. There's about five videos per chapter on some of the questions in the tutorial problems. And in the booklet, they're all marked with a V for video. And you can watch those at home as often as you'd like. Uh, some of them you may find useful, some of them you may not. Part of the idea of that is there are so many problems to cover in the tutorials that it's very hard for the tutors to get through all of them. And so I've made a few videos covering just a small selection of questions out of the tutorial problems. You should try and use those wisely. One way of using them is to watch the video and then sit down and try and do the problem again yourself without having taken any notes and see how much you can remember. But that's a good way of learning the mathematics, to actually see it done um, by someone else firstly, and then you can sit down and do it again yourself. Also, the aim of the videos is to emphasise the importance of setting out. So it's also to give you a model of how you should try and set out the mathematics in this subject. In this subject, as I said in particular, setting out of mathematics is really very, very important and you'll be marked not just on the getting the correct answer to a problem, but also on the logic and the clear setting out, including the use of English, as well as mathematical symbols. So anyway, the videos are available there. Uh, on, there are links on Moodle, and also I have done videos um, of some of the sample tests. There will be sample tests at the end of the information booklet as well and I have done videos of just one of each of the sample tests that you'll be doing. And again, that's to help you um, in terms of how you should set out your solutions. So I think that's probably enough um, uh, background information that I need to say here. There's a list of the syllabuses, there are references there to the, um, to the textbooks, uh, detailed syllabus, and you'll find at the end of all this are uh, the tutorial problems. And there, for example, I mentioned the idea of, of videos. So, for example, in the very first problem set, question two has a V, so that means there's a nice video there. Well, that's a nice video, I hope, uh, showing you um, one way of solving the, this problem and setting out this, the solution uh, very logically. So I hope you enjoy the Discrete Maths course and that you have a very productive and um, enjoyable session with us here at, in the School of Mathematics. This is a very nice course. It's many students who like maths really enjoy this course, but it's also a course you have to really work hard at and put some effort in. And you'll, you will find that if you do that, you'll find that a very rewarding experience. If you have any issues or problems or questions during the semester, please come and talk to me. My door is always open. I'm always happy to talk with students. That includes mathematical questions as well as administrative ones. Please don't wait until the end of semester, until after the results have come out, to then come along to me and say, I had various problems during the semester. It's too late at that stage. If you're having any issues or problems, please feel free to come and talk to me early in the piece so we can try and sort out what can be done. Thank you very much, and once again, have an enjoyable semester.